As a young adult, I remember being amazed by the stunning space photos released by the Hubble Space Telescope. One of the most iconic Hubble images that really blew my mind back in the day was called the Pillars of Creation. These amazing towering shapes at the heart of the Eagle Nebula are massive molecular clouds of gas and dust that are slowly collapsing under their own gravity. As parts of these clouds collapse, they heat up and can eventually ignite to form brand new stars. So, we're looking at the giant cosmic stellar nursery, a place where new stars are born. So I kept asking myself, is this photo even real? Where can I find that object in the night sky? Can I perhaps look at it through a telescope? Or can I take a picture of that object? Those questions got me hooked and I ended up spending the next 10 years learning how to photograph the night sky. So in this video I'll try to answer all of those questions for you. I'm Vido Oerlemans and you are watching Vido's Astroforum. Here's the first thing to know when it comes to photographing space. The longer you take a picture, the more light your camera can collect. And more light means more details. So in this video, I'm going to show you an image with different exposure types. From 20 seconds, to 1 minute, to 1 hour, and even 10 hours. Let's start by taking a simple 20 second photo of the Milky Way using a regular camera. You can even do this with your smartphone. And here it is. Okay, it might not be the most jaw-dropping photo ever, but even in this single unedited 20 second shot, you can already see our majestic Milky Way much more clearly than with just your eyes. You can even spot the mysterious dark dust lanes running through its core. Now here's the cool part. You can actually see the Milky Way with your own eyes. No telescope needed. You just have to be far enough away from city lights. I took this photo at a rural camping site in the south of France under a new moon. Astrophotographers like me often take multiple photos of the same part of the sky and then stack them using software. This helps collect more light and reduces the random noise you get in a single nighttime image. So what happens if we stack three of those 20 second photos together? Well, you get a brighter one minute image of the Milky Way, like this. So where exactly is the Eagle Nebula with its pillars of creation in all of this? That bright patch? That's the Sagittarius star cloud. And just above that? you'll notice two small red dots. The higher one, that's actually the Eagle Nebula. But when I zoom in, it doesn't really look anything like the stunning Hubble image I showed you before. Taking a high quality photo of such a small and distant object in the night sky requires a lot more than just pointing your camera and taking a picture. And that is what makes astrophotography so fascinating for me. Let's move on to my Seastar S50 Smart Telescope. Smart telescopes like this one can automatically find, track and take pictures of deep sky objects like the Eagle Nebula. You can control everything wirelessly using an app on your smartphone or tablet. Alright, so what happens when I use this telescope to take lots of 20 second photos of the Eagle Nebula and then stack them together over the course of about one hour? Well, with each new photo added to the stack, the nebula gets brighter and the image becomes cleaner. Here's the final result. You're looking at almost 220 second photos stacked together to get this one hour image of the Eagle Nebula. Now, is this a perfect image? <laughs> no, of course not. But even so, you can already see way more detail than what early astronomers ever could see through a telescope with just their eyes. You can definitely make out some of the structures we also saw in the Hubble image. But wait, this image displays the nebula in a red glow. We'll get to that in a minute. 
I have several telescope setups right here at home to take images of the night sky. But for the highest quality photos, I actually use telescopes that are not here. In fact, these telescopes are not even in my own country, but in remote dark places like the mountains in Spain, in Chile or the outback in Australia. And the coolest thing is that I can remote connect to these telescopes with my computer using a service called Telescope Live. So let me show you a picture I took with one of these remote telescopes of the Eagle Nebula. This is a single 10 minute photo of the Eagle Nebula, taken remotely using a telescope in Chile. Do you see how much brighter and more detailed it is? That's because a longer exposure time and using a telescope with a bigger aperture collects a lot of light. But I should be honest with you, this photo is already edited. If I show you what the raw, unprocessed version looks like, it's actually really dark. Kind of disappointing at first glance, right? You barely see anything. To reveal all the stars and the nebula hiding in that darkness, we need to stretch the data. Basically, we need to brighten and bring out what's already there in the image. Editing an image like this doesn't make it fake. It's the same thing your phone does automatically when you take a picture. It processes the photo to make it look nice on your screen. Smart Telescope does the same. The difference is, here we do the editing ourselves in a program called PixInsight. When we stretch the image, we're revealing what's already there in the data. It's kinda like taking a photo with your phone and then brightening it later to bring out the details. Now, let's zoom in for a moment. You might notice that even in this 10 minute image, the image looks a little grainy. That grain is what we call noise, and yeah, we don't like noise. To fix that, we take multiple pictures of the same object and then stack them using software. The software blends the images together and cancels out the random noise in the background. For example, here's what it looks like when we stack 18 of those 10 minute images, resulting in a 3 hour overall image. See how much cleaner and more detailed it becomes? And now you might be thinking, wait, what if we stack 10 hours. Great question. Let's keep going. But hold on. Why is this picture in black and white? Didn't we see color earlier in the images of my camera and smart telescope? Where did the color go? Here's the thing. All camera sensors, whether it's your phone, a regular camera or a dedicated astro camera, only see in black and white. They're made up of billions of tiny light sensitive pixels that just measure brightness not color. So how do we get color photos? Well, sitting on top of that sensor is a tiny grid of color filters. Red, green and blue. That grid is called a Bayer filter and it allows the camera to capture light by filtering the light into those basic colors. So each pixel records a particular color, either red, green or blue, at a particular intensity. Then, the software in your phone or camera combines all that color information from different pixels to create a full color image that looks close to what your eyes would see. But the cameras I use for astrophotography work differently. They don't have a Bayer filter. Instead, I choose one color filter at a time and then take separate images. In this case, I used special filters that are similar to the ones the Hubble Space Telescope uses to capture deep space objects like the Eagle Nebula. In Hubble images, we assign specific colors to each gas to help us tell them apart. For example, hydrogen, which naturally glows in red like you saw in the earlier pictures, is actually shown as green or yellow. Sulfur is shown as red and oxygen is shown as blue. The color mapping is just a creative and scientific way to highlight the different gases and structures in the nebula by giving them different colors. So remember how we started with just a quick 20 second photo of the Milky Way? Then we moved on to capturing over one hour of images of the Eagle Nebula using my smart telescope. That already revealed way more detail than you'd ever see with your eyes alone. But what happens when we go even further? I captured 10 full hours of data using three filters, just like the ones used by the Hubble Space Telescope, and when we combined it all, this is the stunning result.
Now, it's still not quite the level of detail you'd get from the Hubble Space Telescope. But what's incredible is how close we can get. It's right there, waiting for us to explore. I'm Bido Ullemans, Clear Skies.